This is my Tascam 32 reel to reel, which I bought in the 80s from my home studio, The Zone. I used it for mixing down my bands, bands here in Atlanta, and my first major label credit for the swimming pool cues. But as I got into the 90s and transitioning into digital, this thing got set to the side and eventually put into storage. But recently, I pulled it out thinking I'd experiment with some old school tape echo and make an Instagram and TikTok video about it, but things didn't really go as I planned. I actually almost didn't post the video, but I did it anyway. And surprisingly, there was a lot of support and enthusiasm and advice about what I should do about this thing. So I figured, well, let me keep working on it and make another video about it. And that led to more things that happened and more videos and it went on. But anyway, I put all the videos together Together here so you could see the whole story at one time. As some of you may remember when I pulled out my old Tascam 32 reel to reel to experiment with tape echo, I found this. The years of inattention had taken its toll. After searching online, I was able to find a replacement. But first, I had to get all this gunky rubber off this thing. This took at least two hours. Eventually, I was able to slide the new roller onto the hub. And yes, I'm aware that by doing it this way and not replacing the whole assembly, I'm going to probably have increased wow and flutter. But for the purposes of making a funky tape echo, this might actually help. To test everything, I put on a reel of tape that I had just baked because it had had some sticky tape issues. I've not heard what's on here in a really long time. But tape baking can cause old edits to come unglued. So before I can hear anything, I've got to splice it back together. This is leader tape that I spliced between songs. Let's rewind it back to the start and see what it sounds like. Now that's the part where it's supposed to be playing. The cap stand is supposed to be spinning pretty much all the time. It's the thing that actually moves the tape over the head at a steady pace. The reels only have enough power to take up the slack. I'm sure this thing was spinning when I pulled it out of storage a couple years ago. Maybe there's just some gunk in there. Let me just try pushing it along. Let me just get it going. I've had this work before. I just want to hear what's on this reel. I just want this thing to work. Ugh. Come on, come on. Mmm. Mm. Failure. I don't want to have to buy a new motor. When I put out this video a couple days ago, I didn't expect the response that I got. To tell you the truth, I'd kind of given up on the whole thing. But there were so many comments of encouragement and advice that I figured, man, maybe I can fix this thing. I wanted to get on it right away. I even went out and bought the sewing machine oil as was suggested. And then I started researching capstan belts. But I thought, before I spend any money, maybe I should open it up and see what's going on inside. Now this video might make you think that I know what I'm doing and I'm some sort of expert, but I can assure you, I'm no expert. In fact, I've never done this before, but it scares the shit out of me because I've totally destroyed things before letting my enthusiasm run ahead of my experience and good sense. Not that I actually have really that good a sense, but I'm willing to do what I gotta do to get where I gotta go. And I found a bunch of YouTube videos of people taking these things apart, which is the only reason I was able to take this faceplate off. As to the mystery of why my tape machine wasn't working, I think this is a really good clue right here. This is probably the remains of the capstan belt and is now basically tar. Oh yeah, this is the flywheel from the capstan and that looks like a piece of a rubber belt. You remember, the capstan wasn't spinning, which is the thing that actually keeps the tape moving. There are a lot of ideas in the comments about what was causing the problem, and it would appear that the rotten capstan belt crew had it right. So, I'm going to be ordering myself a new belt, and in the meantime, I got to clean up all this gunky mess. Ugh, I'm not even sure what to clean it with. Any ideas out there? Well... There were a lot of ideas out there, and thanks so much to everybody for helping me out with this. I don't think I could have done it without you. So, two weeks later... Well, it has been one hell of an adventure, but I did manage to replace the capstan belt on this machine. Now, the reason I originally pulled this machine out was just to experiment with old school tape echo, but that led to a series of repairs, which led to me wondering, what's on this reel right here? And that led to me finding a bunch of other old reels at my other studio. But I'll get to that in a minute. First, let's see what's on here. Whoa, that's, that's not what I expected. So this is my band, Tin Jaw Joe, which was a band I had back in the late 80s and early 90s with Jimmy B, who I'm now working with in Tokyo Teens, and Quinny Mullenix. We had our own cereal. It had a game on the back. I'm not really crazy about the way I sang back then. This one's all right. Let's see what else is on here. 
I don't know what this is, but I know it's me. <laughs> That's definitely Jimmy B on bass, and I know this is me, I just have no memory of. Cool. Let's skip ahead a little bit. I know that's me. Big man that's of really old. 89, 90. I don't know who's playing drums on this. Could be Glenn Bender, could be a couple other guys. I don't know, I like the drums on here. You can go anywhere. Dude, come on, end the song. Oh, I had a lot of time back then. <laughs> I had a lot of time back then. Okay. Of course. Now about those other reels I was talking about. Check this out. All of this had gotten me really curious about old tapes I had been storing at my other studio, The Zone. So I went and grabbed a bunch and brought them back here. These tapes are only 20 years old. The real gems are these right here. Some of these are recordings that I did on my Tascam 3340S4 track that I bought when I was 15 years old. Recordings of my own music, bands that I had in high school, and others right after that. It's crazy seeing these song titles. That's from high school. 1982. 1984. Since these tapes are old, I'm gonna have to bake them before I can play them. Oh, and I also found these tapes that my dad recorded when he was in Vietnam. I've never heard of them. If anybody's interested in hearing what's on these reels, let me know, and maybe I'll play some of that. Well, it turns out that there were a few more things I needed to do before I could transfer anything from my reel-to-reel -reel tape machine into the computer. You'll remember that I had just finished a bunch of repairs to this thing and was playing back some old recordings of my band Tin Jaw Joe from way, way back. A lot of people seemed to like the songs and I thought, well, let me transfer them into the computer and post them up somewhere. But something didn't sound right. The left side and the right side didn't sound the same. And then I remembered, oh, I need to set the reproduction alignment. Luckily, I still had my old MRL tape. So now I can make sure that the left side and the right side are playing back at the same level and with the same high and low frequency response. This is done by turning the teeny little screws inside here while playing back the tones on the MRL tape. Right now, I'm mostly concerned with the repro calibration and the repro EQ. Magnetic Reference Laboratory, Reproducer Test Take Catalog number 21J103, speed 15 inches per second, equalization per IEC recommendation, 1000 hertz at reference fluxivity of 200 nanowebers per meter. There are more tones and settings to adjust, but you get the idea. Bottom line is, now I can transfer this Tin Jaw Joe album I mixed back in the early 90s into the computer and post it up online somewhere. The big question for me right now is, DistroKid, TuneCore, what's best? I wasn't really expecting to be doing this at this point in my life, but it's pretty cool. And of course, there are a lot of opinions about what the best distributor is for my music, which I'm gonna pick one and I will be putting it out. But I did wanna say that this whole experience was 
kind of life changing for me. The fact that all the people watching my videos and their input, it actually changed the way I thought about what I'm doing with my videos, actually the kind of work I'm taking on my regular production mixing jobs, but also how this YouTube channel is going to change. I know I don't post a lot of videos because I'm working a lot. Now, if I had more subscribers, maybe I could do this full time, but it will be changing what I'm doing and, and you'll be seeing some of that to come. I'm definitely going to be putting out the Vietnam tapes and I got some other cool ideas. So remember to subscribe, stick around, come back and always be unique.